issues. With us now is Dr. Stephen Sinatra with Healthy Directions, the cardiologist and a psychotherapist, and is here to talk more about heart health. Good morning, doctor. How are you this morning? Uh, good morning, Elizabeth. It's good to be with you. Thank you so much for getting up early for us. We appreciate that. Can this isolation that we've been dealing with for so many months, can it lead to heart issues or what you call heartbreak? Oh, definitely. I wrote the book Heartbreak and Heart Disease years ago. And whenever you're lonely, depressed, and feeling low, it's it's an awful sensation for the heart because the heart responds to biochemicals that are released from the brain and there's hormonal interactions. So whenever you're lonely or depressed or isolated, oh, yeah, the heart gets affected big time. Oh, yeah. Are there any precautions that people can take to um, kind of help ward off problems that may be coming? You mean, what can you do to help you get a stronger immune system? That's it. Ready. Well, what about you... high cholesterol? Does that complicate COVID-19 or can it be a protective factor? We don't know yet, but I'll tell you this. High cholesterol protects a lot of people from gastrointestinal illness. And we know in children with MRSA staph, which is deadly, by the way, mm -hmm. in children, the higher cholesterol the better you do with MRSA staff, the, the greater the survival. So somebody will do this research, but I have a feeling that higher cholesterol intrinsically will protect these people going forward with COVID-19. That's only my feeling, yes. but I bet this research comes out within the next six months to a year. Dr. Sinatra, let me tell you something. That's some of the best news I've heard all day because I have the tendency to have higher cholesterol levels, and I'm feeling pretty good about myself now. That's great. You and all these Framingham people with the highest cholesterols live the longest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're delightful, and you know so much, and there's so much more we can talk about. So maybe you can come back and, and enlighten us on telemedicine and all these other things that you know more about. Uh, so are there things that we can do uh, ahead of time? We don't know we're going to get them, but just to better protect ourselves from having any of these long-term effects if you were to get COVID-19. Well... I'm a big believer in targeted nutritional supplements, and there is enormous data out there, for example, on vitamin D, where it supports your innate and adaptive immunity. And um, there was a recent study that came out that really caught my eye. In fact, I, I did a Facebook Live on, uh, on DrSinatra.com with it. And, and basically, um, in a study of uh, several hundred patients, they showed that if your vitamin D level in the blood was at a certain level, uh, we can call it like 30 to 35 UGs per ml, that you did not get complications uh, or even death for that matter from the coronavirus. And that really caught my attention mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people in the country that have blood levels that are very low in a 10 to 15 range. And when they, if they get the virus, for some reason, they succumb uh, uh, partially to uh, some of the complications. So. I think vitamin D is a knockout punch, and uh, I've been recommending that okay. my subscribers take at least two to 5,000 units a day. And certainly, um, vitamin D and magnesium are synergistic, and uh, I like magnesium as well. Um, I've been a big believer in coenzyme Q10 for almost 40 years. I mean, I've written books on it. I've heard and, of that, uh, yeah. Studied it in the cardiac population, and I really like that because it supports the endothelium. And this virus attacks the endothelium of blood vessels, so it just makes sense to consider coenzyme Q10 as well. It makes me nervous when I hear the president of the United States entering a hospital. Uh, the White House initially said for precautionary reasons, though they now say he might be there a few days. Is there any read into that, or is this being overly cautious for the Commander-in-Chief? Great question. I think it's overly cautious. Um, I remember working at St. Francis Hospital in Hartford, Connecticut, as an intern resident and a cardiology fellow. And I never knew it, but when the Archbishop was uh, you know, admitted there with a cardiac problem, and I, and I saw him on a floor I didn't even know existed, it was like the Taj Mahal. It had, uh, you know, it was beautiful. It was like being in a, you know, in a Manhattan hotel. So I don't know what Walter Reed has. I'm sure they have a great facility. I'm sure they have great air filtration systems going on there as well as healthy waters and, and it's nice and clean. So with the president being in Walter Reed, I think he's in good shape there. Now, I really love apples. I'll tell you why. There was a study in Holland and green apples. Now, kids may not eat green apples. They may prefer a red apple, but green apples have quercetin. And quercetin is a bioflavonoid found in onions and apples and actually black tea. 
And quercetin fights respiratory viruses. There's a great studies to show that it, it is an, an antidote to respiratory viruses, and people do much better, you know, taking quercetin compounds. So I love the fact that you're giving these kids, you know, apples, preferably green apples over red apples. I'm sure a lot of people will be rejoicing to know that you say even dark chocolate can be helpful. Well, dark chocolate, uh, again, in moderation, because sure. dark chocolate helps to stimulate what we call phenylethylamine, which is the love hormone. In other words, it's, it's the feel-good hormone. So the darker the chocolate, the better. But remember, in this pandemic, we want to keep sugar to a minimum. So if you do do dark chocolate, do at least 70 to 80 percent or more, uh, because this has, a, this has a high antioxidant polyphenol content. Yeah. But you don't want to eat dark chocolate every day, because remember, sugar is the enemy going forward, okay. because sugar can literally stifle our white blood cells and cause, you know, uh, more inflammation going forward. All right, now let's turn to intense exercise. Can that increase the risk of a heart attack? Oh, as a cardiologist, I saw this over and over again. Uh, I remember one of the cases, there was a 36-year-old Marine who was playing racquetball against a younger uh, participant at 19 years old, and he died on a racquetball court. <gasps> oh, no. He had a massive uh, heart attack. Uh, fortunately, we resuscitated him, and, uh, you know, we, we got him back to life. But the literature is full of this. First of all, racquetball is, is start, stop, start, exactly. stop. Exactly. It's really not a good sport for the heart. Also, marathon running. I mean, yeah. uh, I got to be honest with you. Marathon running, I mean, it's been reported over and over again where people die during marathons. So these are two sports where, as a cardiologist, I, t I would tend to tell people to do less of because, again, they're incriminated in heart disease. Right. Good news for me. I don't do either. So uh, that, that's, that's promising for me. I am optimistic that by this summer, um, I, I think America is going to free up and people are going to feel better about themselves. They're going to be networking with one another. And whenever you network with people, uh, you literally get your life back. I can tell you that as a heart specialist. <laughs> What's wrong with wearing shoes all the time, which as a Florida girl, I never do. I'm always walking around barefoot, but what's the issue with shoes? Well, keep walking barefoot because barefoot will save your life. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I've been doing research on earthing and grounding for over a decade, and the, the research is unbelievable. The healthiest thing you can possibly do for Floridians is walk the ocean. In other words, if you can walk on an incoming tide or an outgoing tide, it doesn't matter. But if you can walk in that water and get the grounded energy of the earth, remember, the grounded energy is like the Schumann resonance. We call it the ohm or the humming of the earth. It's the vibration of the earth. Where does that vibration come from? It comes from lightning strikes, particularly around the equator. Now, I live in Tampa for half the year, and, and you know, living in Florida, you know we get a lot of thunderstorms. <laughs> yeah. I love it. After a thunderstorm, I go outside, I smell the ozone, I go barefoot, you know, I... I walk on brick or concrete. Asphalt will not conduct the natural earth energy. Remember that. Right. Asphalt remember. is out. Right. But sand is the best, especially at the beach. I love it. Dr. Sinatra, don't make it so long before we see you again. You're awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow. Really fascinating stuff, Dr. Sinatra. We really appreciate you sharing all of this. Any We're going to be walking out of here with no shoes, no socks on. Any relation to any Frank? <laughs> Was there any relation to Frank? No, right? How many times have you been asked that? Sort of, yeah. yeah. I mean, my great grandfather and his father grew up in the same town in uh, Sicily. So oh, there you go. the library burned down in 1898, so we really don't know. But I'll tell you, his first wife, Nancy Sinatra, I treated for years. Oh, okay. wow. Look at Small that. Small world. Dr. Sinatra, thanks oh. so much. We really enjoyed speaking with you this morning. Oh, yeah. likewise. Good right. stuff. The best thing you can do as a psychotherapist is cry. In other words, let your emotions out. Get, let your deep sorrow, your depression, your anxiety, your panic, let it come out through your tears. One of the things about tears is that tears contain endorphins. These are the feel-good hormones, and when they get released, this helps our mind-body connection. And when you cry and you're sobbing and deeply sobbing, this can release biochemicals literally in the lung. And when these biochemicals get released, it thins the blood. So, it, so crying protects the body. There's so many different mechanisms. But again, as a heart specialist and as a psychotherapist, I can tell you this. If you want to release the heartbreak that can lead to heart disease, uh -huh. cry it out. It's the best thing you can possibly do. Wow. I have learned so much in this interview. I am not a crier. I do not like to cry. But you're telling me in order to stay healthy, I need to let it go, right? <laughs> 
Absolutely. You know, that was one of my issues growing up. And uh, thank God I was in the Gestalt and the bioenergetic psychotherapy training program because I realized as, as a heart specialist early on that when I saw men who didn't cry, they were prone to heart disease, heart attack, and sudden wow. death. I mean, I saw that firsthand. I can tell you wow. that. Well, I tell you what, Dr. Sinatra, after this newscast, I am going to go home later this afternoon. I'm going to have a good cry and think about how those endorphins are going to make me healthier. Thank you so much. That's right. That's Great absolutely interview. right. What a pleasure talking to you this morning. And for Thanks our so viewers, you can connect with Dr. Sinatra at drsinatra.com. Thanks so much for joining me again. What a pleasure.